Since Joe Biden was sworn in as president only a little over a week ago, I thought I'd make a Talking Presidents video. Plus, literally all of you wanted one, so here it is. Now, brief disclaimer. I will not be including any of the f uh, past four presidents for the sake of not being too controversial. This video is going to be controversial, but I feel that by including any of these past four presidents, I will probably be, I guess, stirring the pot way too much. So, yeah. Also, it's pretty hard to judge Joe Biden's job performance because he's only been in office for like 12 days. So, yeah. Let's hop right into it with number 10, Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson, also known as LBJ, was JFK's vice president, but after Kennedy was tragically shot in 1963, he took over. He wasted no time. He passed the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which helped African Americans in the South vote. Before the passing of the bill, many poll workers in the South were able to prevent black people from voting uh, by the poll tax, where they basically asked for a ludicrous amount of money for them to vote or the literacy test, in which they read black people clauses of the Constitution and asked them to, def to interpret clauses that can only be defined by experienced lawyers. LBJ also signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. The provisions of the Civil Rights uh, Act, uh, like I said, made it very hard for employers to discriminate against certain people. LBJ also signed the Clean, the Clean Air Act as, uh, as well, which uh, helped control pollution in the U.S. One of his biggest accomplishments was uh, adding me uh, Medicare and Medicaid to the, to social, to the Social Security benefits. Excuse me. Number nine is Harry S. Truman. Truman was FDR's vice president from 1944 to 1945, and he took over after FDR tragically died in office. Truman was a strong leader and helped end World War II. After the war, Europe was in shambles because they had been fighting for over six years straight. Truman signed the Marshall Plan, which gave $15 billion to Western Europe to help them rebuild themselves. Truman also declared the Truman Doctrine, which basically labeled communists as the enemy and said that, the, said that America and its allies would do anything in their power, would do everything in their power to stop communist expansion. I like Truman because some of his policies are appealing to me, plus the fact that he was honest and upfront about everything he did. Moving on to number eight, we have Dwight D. Eisenhower, and I always find it interesting. Spoiler alert: we have a very good stretch of presidents uh, from uh, FDR, who's going to be on this list later. Spoiler alert: uh, all the way up to uh, some other people. So I think this we had a great stretch of presidents from the 1930s to even the 1970s, I guess, or 1960s rather. Now Dwight D. Eisenhower was famous even before his presidency because he was a general in the American military and helped orchestrate the landing on Normandy on D-Day. Throughout his term, he enjoyed a spectacular economy, with the exception of a minor recession that took place in 1960, and also added the final states, Alaska and Hawaii. Eisenhower signed the Civil Rights Act, which was actually voted on in the Senate because of Senate Majority Leader Lyndon B. Johnson, who is number 10 on my list. Now moving on to number 7, who is the most recent president on this list, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton is interesting because although he had some scandals while in office, most notably the Monica Lewinsky scandal, I strongly believe his policies helped the country. For example, he added 22 million jobs, uh, a lot of which were in the Midwest, which is interesting because Clinton's presidency, um, because since that presidency has ended, m uh, all the presidents have struggled to create jobs in the Midwest. Clinton's constituents also enjoyed the highest home ownership rate in American history and the lowest crime rate in 26 years. The poverty rate w w was terrific for Clinton, too, as you can see on your screen. Most notably, and perhaps most uh, impressively, however, Bill Clinton balanced the budget and is un is unfortunately the last president to do so. To put it in perspective, we're currently in debt by over $23.5 trillion, so uh, just 20 years ago we had a balanced budget. Number six is Calvin Coolidge. Now, I remember how I used to be a Cal Calvin Coolidge hater, but my mind has changed as I've read up on him. I originally thought that his economic policies helped cause the Great Depression, but in reality I was wrong. His, ep his economic policies helped the country in many ways. And he's one of the few classic conservatives that I really, really like. He also cut the federal debt by over 25% while cutting taxes for nearly everyone. This was because he cut programs that weren't super important for the country. He signed soldiers. He signed the Soldiers' Bonus Act, which gave paychecks to veterans of World War One. He also signed the Indian Citizen Citizenship Act, which granted all Native Americans born in the U.S. the right to vote. Now, at number five is John F. Kennedy. Unfortunately, Kennedy died three years into his term, but uh, he still was a great president for many reasons. He was a big civil rights activist, and he, and he ultimately proposed a civil rights bill that would become 
uh, this, uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which was signed by Lyndon B. Johnson, another great president. JFK took, uh, t- helped take the economy out of recession that entered in uh, 1960 and, and helped avoid a nuclear war by handling the Cuban Missile Crisis well. To this day, I myself and many others admire JFK for his tranquil reaction to the fact that there were literally nuclear bombs 100 miles from Florida. Kennedy also signed the Equal Pay Act of 1963, which helped pave the way for women making just as much as their male counterparts in the workplace. Now for number four, we have Teddy Roosevelt. Roosevelt is best known for the fact that he loved nature. He wouldn't shoot a bear tied to a tree, and for this reason, the teddy bear is named after him. But Roosevelt was also a trust buster, meaning that he took on the big corporations like no president did before him. Tier also made the conservation movement mainstream, and he won the Nobel Peace Prize for ending the the Russo-Japanese War with his great negotiation skills. The score deer was, was also a key part of his presidency. The, the deal had three main points of the three C's. Conservation of natural resources, regulating corporations, and consumer protection. Today, all of these things remain mainstream. Roosevelt also signed the, food, the Pure Food and Drug Act, which regulated drugs and made it so that Big Pharma couldn't just sell anything to the public. The government now ha- had to check it, or ha- now today has to check it to make sure it's safe for people to consume. Tier also supported women's suffrage and was the first president to voice support for the cause. Number three is George Washington. Other than, you know, being the first president stuff, I admire George Washington for his humbleness and for his dignity. Washington could have acted like a dictator and seized total power, but instead he created many traditions that still define American democracy today. Washington also famously said that political parties would harm the country, not help, and warn the nation against the creation of them. It turns out that he was right. Washington also notably signed the Jay Treaty. Well, at the time, the the Jay Treaty was viewed somewhat unfavorably. I, I think it was a smart play on Washington's part. America was a young country, and if they had gone to war with Britain again, without the aid of France and Spain, Britain probably would have wiped the floor with us. This shows Washington was humble and understood the long-term ramifications, instead of getting caught up in, I guess, the hype of of a new country. Number two is Abraham Lincoln. Everyone knows Abraham Lincoln to some extent, whether it be his, his honesty or his legacy. Most notably, Lincoln abolished slavery, which is obviously a key part of his presidency, but he did many other things as well. A highlight that I uh, think is interesting was the, Homestead, was, was the Homestead Act, which allowed people who are moving out west to purchase government-owned land. This gave the, the government money and helped them uh, pay for things in the future. And the moment we've all been waiting for. Number one, there was never a doubt in my mind, it's FDR. FDR was a great president in so many ways. He did fireside chats when he went on public radio and discussed the state of things and reminded Americans he was there for them. The Green, I almost said the Green New Deal. The New Deal was a part of his was a huge part of his legacy, and it is among the most genius strategies economically that I've ever seen. The economic reforms put in place were incredibly successful, and to this day, many of them remain a key part of our society. FDR invented Social Security as well as the Good Neighbor Policy, which, in short, improved relations uh, with countries like that, like Latin America, and uh, other countries south of us. FDR signed the other acts like the Emergency Banking Act. He fought for gender equality in his cabinet. He appointed Frances Perkins as Secretary of Labor. She was the first woman in a cabinet, in a president's cabinet. He raised taxes on the rich and established the minimum wage, key steps for the American working class. Roosevelt's leadership helped us win World War II and helped create the UN. These are just a few of his main accomplishments, and I still stand him today. So thanks for watching. Uh, Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below. Did I miss anyone? Do you think someone's ranked too high or too low on this list? Thank you all for, and as I said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.